The main character's name is Luo Shengshu. He is walking home alone. He's about to turn 18 and has a hell of a college entrance exam waiting for him. But that's no problem for him. The boy's mom has accepted that her youngest son is a hikikomori. Because of his mom's job, Luo Shengshu lives alone in the apartment. He comes home in the evening with a bag of groceries. A guy walks into an empty apartment, suddenly realizes he's wrong. Luo Shengshu takes off her shoes. Technically, the apartment is not empty. The guy flicks a switch, and the lights come on in the room. Standing on the threshold of the room, Luo Shengshu shouts to his wives that he is home. The guy puts the bag on the table and talks about his trip to the supermarket. The bag is filled with not the healthiest of foods. It is filled with noodles and other goodies. Luo is holding instant noodles in his hand. He tells me that he bought some new flavors to try out. Luo Shengshu walks across the room to his closet. He stops at the glass doors in front of the closet, and the guy apologizes for his delay. A variety of figurines gleam on the shelves. Each doll is dressed in its own special outfit. The cute girl with the microphone sparkles like the real thing, and winks playfully at the guy. Luo Shengshu looks at them with love and adoration. They are his favorite wives. Today the guy of choice is Remchan. She's going out to dinner with him. He had prepared everything he needed for dinner on the table. All he had to do was wait. While waiting, Luo Shengshu feels empty and depressed. He doesn't have any flirting skills. He felt like a nobody. Luo Shengshu falls to the floor and screams in anger at his mother. He blamed his name for everything. His eyes fill with tears at the unfair, strange name. And he wonders what he's in for. Suddenly a melody starts playing from the table. The boy recognizes it as his ringtone. Luo Shengshu starts to reach for the source of the sound and picks up his cell phone. The guy brings his phone up to his face and stares sadly at the screen. Incoming call from an unknown number is written on the phone screen. Luo Shengshu brings the phone to his ear and answers the call. A voice from the phone says that the courier is already there and you need to pick up the package. And now the long-awaited box is lying right on the floor of his house, right in front of him. Luo Shengshu picks it up and looks at it. He pulls out a box cutter. He hurries to start unpacking the package at the table. He completely forgets about the noodles. The guy pulls a new cell phone out of the box. He ordered it a few days ago. Luo Shengshu is very happy. After all, now he will have a new phone, pineapple 11 inches. The guy takes the wire and immediately puts his new phone on charge. He decides he needs to transfer his data to the new phone first. Luo immediately sits down at the computer and his fingers start typing at high speed. And now the computer screen shows that the data transfer process has started. Luo Shengshu is very pleased with himself. He has accomplished one of the main tasks. The process of transmitting information will take some time, so Luo Shengshu decides to get some sleep. The guy's old cell phone is left lying abandoned on the pillow. It's like the owner forgot about it. A guy eyes lying on the floor near his old cell phone and starts to fall asleep. A strange whispering of his name comes from an unknown place. This voice wakes up Luo Shengshu. The boy opens his eyes and hears that whisper from the darkness again. There is darkness all around and he doesn't realize where he is. A whisper asks if he wants superpowers. The boy tries to find out who is talking to him. Luo Shengshu is not impressed by the sentence from the strange voice. This is kindergarten. The guy demands that the joke stop. Suddenly a bright light appears behind Luo. I don't know where it came from. This light is blinding Luo Shengshu. It doesn't even help when he covers himself with his hand. A delicate and gentle female hand emerges from this light. She is surrounded by it. Behind her, a beautiful blonde-haired girl also appears. She reaches out to Luo Shengshu. The guy is surprised and doesn't know what to do. He looks at her and forgets to blink. But the girl keeps reaching out. A light starts to come out of her palm. Luo Shengshu only stares at the girl's approach without moving. A familiar tune starts playing again. It's very loud and wakes the guy up. Luo Shengshu frowned through his sleep. He made a mistake again and didn't turn off the alarm clock before going to bed this weekend. It's only half past eight on the clock, but the phone keeps ringing. Luo Shengshu is very annoyed. He punches the screen hoping to turn off the alarm clock. But something else is happening. A purple glow and a strange seal against it. Luo Shengshu slowly opens his eyes. He sees his hand on the woman's leg. The guy is sleepy and doesn't know what's going on at all. He's trying to figure out what's in his hand. Luo Shengshu runs his hand over his leg and squeezes it. He feels the warmth and softness of another's skin. Luo Shengshu realizes what is happening. He sees the girl in front of him who is still holding his leg. The girl looks back at him in embarrassment. Luo Shengshu bounces off the girl. The guy starts screaming. He asks her how she got here and who she even is. The stranger looks surprised. Suddenly she begins to speak. Calling Luo Shengshu master, she asks how she became like this. This appeal brings Luo Shengshu to a standstill. He doesn't know what to say to her. The guy decides that the girl must have been drunk and accidentally walked into someone else's house. Luo asks not to call himself the host because he doesn't have the money for these games. She needs another guy for these games, but the girl looks surprised. After that, tears appear in the stranger's eyes, and the girl starts to cry. 
Luo Shengshu is shocked by this girl's behavior, and he doesn't realize what he said wrong. In hysterics, the girl starts screaming that the master doesn't recognize her at all. She is agitated since he has been using her for so long. Luo Shengshu doesn't understand what's going on. The girl calmed down a bit and said that because of the new phone the foreman wanted to throw her out. Luo Shengshu is in a panic. He asks the girl to stop and give him a word. He screams that he has no idea who she is and has never seen her. And she was the one in his room when he woke up. Who knows what she was going to do? The guy makes the decision to call the police. Luo looks over to where he last saw it, but there is no phone on the pillow. He moves his gaze to the table trying to find it there, but it's not on the table either. There's a phone charging on the table, but it's a new one. The old one is nowhere to be seen. Luo Shengshu doesn't understand where his phone could have gone. Suddenly the guy remembers a dream he had last night. It was really weird. The last memory, a handful of light beside him. He feels strange. Luo Shengshu can't believe that this strange girl is his phone. Suddenly from the girl's side, the ringtone that is on the guy's phone starts playing. Luo Shengshu realizes that it's his phone ringtone and tensely looks at the girl. The guy points his finger at the girl. He yells and accuses her of stealing his phone. Luo Shengshu demands that the surprised girl return his phone now. The stranger instead calmly asks whether to answer the call or drop it. Luo Shengshu is angry. He wants his phone back and to answer the call. The girl starts to move. The guy warns her not to even think about running away. Unexpectedly, both of the girl's hands lay on Luo Shengshu's shoulders, and the stranger kisses the guy hard. They fall together right to the floor. Luo Shengshu is confused, and he doesn't understand at all what just happened. The guy's screams can be heard outside the apartment, and even outside the house. Luo Shengshu didn't understand why this girl was leaning against him. The guy continued to scream and push the strange stranger away from him. He asked her to control herself. Opening just one eye, he saw the awkward position he was in. Luo Shengshu quickly removed his hands from the girl's chest and moved further away from her. Both of them were very embarrassed and blushed. Luo Shengshu apologized to the stranger. The guy was embarrassed and didn't understand why he was apologizing at all. After all, the girl had kissed him first, but this kiss was Luo's first. When Luo was 12 years old and in middle school, at one of the recesses, he heard a classmate say that if you don't date girls until you're 25, you can become a wizard. Luo Shengshu wanted to become a wizard very badly. Until that moment, he had never imagined that it was possible. But now the boy looked back at the girl and thought about what had happened to him. Suddenly, the girl spoke in the voice of Luo's mom. The stranger looked at him expectantly. The mother continued to call calmly to her son, and the girl relayed her words. The boy's mom asked him to give her a sign if her son could hear her. Luo Shengshu thought that this blessing didn't seem like something bad. But then there was a shout. It was my mother, demanding that I answer her immediately. It worked better than all the entreaties before. And Luo Shengshu finally answered. He was still surprised that the girl spoke in her mother's voice. She asked if there was anyone else with him. Luo Shengshu answered her that he was talking to himself. There were no beauties in his room. The boy couldn't understand why the girl was speaking in his mom's voice. Even her posture reminded him of his mom. Hearing the answer, the mom got worried. She asked her son if he had been playing games all night. Luo Shengshu told her that he had been studying all night and asked what his mother wanted him to do. But the girl didn't look pleased, and she was clearly not satisfied with that answer. The stranger with her mom's voice freaked out. She started pulling the guy's ear. The girl yelled, Can't mom just call for no reason? Luo thought that sounded a lot like his mom. So he told her that she could call whenever she wanted, but to let him go and he would do whatever she asked him to do. The girl let go of Luo Shengshu's ear and stepped away from him. The table rocked as the girl sat down on it. Mom sent Luo Shengshu to the neighbor's house. He had to ask her about the rent. The sooner he did it, the better. Luo agreed to do it. His ear still hurt. He needed it a little. His mom said that was all for today and said goodbye. The girl waved goodbye. A loud beep was the end of the conversation. The guy kept looking at the strange girl. She spoke in her own voice. She told him the call was over. But Luo Shengshu asked her to stop with a single hand movement. Finally, the guy starts to realize who this girl is. She's his cell phone. He compared her appearance to his cell phone, and it confirmed his hunch. Luo Shengshu came to the conclusion that if that was really the case, that dream was no ordinary dream. Now he has his powers. The guy decided to set his sights on finding out what he was even capable of. The girl looked at Luo carefully, and he thought that just by touching the phone, it turned him into a girl. Does it extend to other objects? The boy smirked, anticipating what he could do with that kind of power. It was perfect for him. Luo Shengshu took one of his statues and decided to try it on her. He was very excited, swallowed, and mentally prepared to begin. The guy swung around with a shout and was about to turn the doll into a living person. Luo's fingers touched the statuette he held in his other hand, but nothing happened to her. She continued to be just a doll. He and the girl were silent in surprise. Luo Shengshu began to panic. 
He didn't understand what had gone wrong and what was wrong. The girl touched her master's shoulder. She was worried about him, so she asked if everything was alright. The guy turned sharply on her, put his hands on her shoulders, and scrutinized her. Luo Shengshu wanted proof from her. If she's his phone, let her tell him what files Luo keeps. The girl was surprised at this abrupt change of subject. She looked at the boy with open eyes, but she pulled herself together and got a little embarrassed. After that, the girl started to answer. The girl explained in detail what files are stored in the phone and how to get to them. Everything was right, which means it's really a phone. The girl asked why the pictures with girls in the folder were homework. Luo Shangshu was embarrassed. He asked her not to say anything. He thought it was a disaster. The phone rejoiced and made an assumption that the owner wanted to know more about women's clothing. Luo Shangshi froze and agreed with her assumption. That's how he was able to get away with it. Sweat dripped down his cheek. It was very close to failure. They sat down on the floor. Luo finally decided to ask the girl her name. The girl hesitated and said she had no name, but if the master wants one, he can give it himself. Luo Shangshu was very surprised by such a suggestion from the girl. He closed his eyes and started thinking about what name would suit his phone. Phone waited impatiently for an answer. She was very curious about what name she would have. The guy introduced the girl in different clothes. She has black straight hair, just the way he likes it. It was a tough choice, but he was able to make it and settle on one option. Now the girl will be called Nikki. Nikki repeated her new name, checking how it sounded. The girl liked it very much. After all, it was the name given to her by her favorite master. Nikki hugged the guy with all her might and thanked him for her new name. In Luo's embrace, Shen Shu felt as happy as he had never felt before. They heard a knock from behind the door, and then they heard the lock being opened. Nikki looked at the guy with loving eyes. He couldn't figure out who had come. Luo grabbed the girl and carried her as fast as he could to the closet. Then he hid her there. He held her firmly by the shoulders as he placed her inside. The guy asked Nikki to sit very quietly and wait for him in the closet. The girl was surprised. She asked if she should put herself on standby. Luo Shengshu was very tense and told the girl, Do it. The guy quickly closed the closet in a panic looking back. He ran to the exit of the room and tried to figure out why his mother had come so early. Luo opened the door at the same time as the woman on the other side. It was his mom, and he asked her why she was here. Luo's mom started to take off her shoes. She looked at her son and asked why he looked so tired. The boy was confused and didn't know what to say. He replied that he had just woken up. His mom didn't seem convinced. Luo Shengshu didn't understand why she came back so early. He asked her about it. The woman walked into the room and put her bag down. She asked if she'd interrupted her son's entertainment. The boy came in behind her and answered the question in the negative. Luo clumsily tried to justify himself to his mom, but it didn't work well. The woman suddenly began to sniff the air in the room. She assumed a pensive pose. The rich smell of the girl filled her son's room. The boy was shocked by his mother's abilities. He tried to come up with an excuse, but given his mom's abilities, it was useless. Nikki was hidden in the closet. Everything should have been fine. But Luo saw the girl's shoe on the floor. She was lying right in front of the closet where the girl was hidden. The guy was shaking all over. When did the shoe get there before he noticed it? Luo began to quietly sneak over to the shoe. He hoped to hide the shoe before his mom saw it. He was so close to his goal. His hand was almost to the shoe. The movement caught the mom's attention. She turned toward her son. He was sitting right in front of the closet with his hands behind his back. Mom asked why he had decided to sit down so suddenly. The boy smiled nervously. He tried to make up an excuse again, but it wasn't very plausible. Luo's mom didn't believe her son at all. The woman felt that it was imperative that she learn her son's secret. She picked up a doll from the table that had been left there after the failed transformation. She looked at her carefully and smiled. She had a cunning plan. The woman shouted a warning and threw the doll. Luo was surprised and flustered. He forgot the protection of his shoes and rushed to save one of his many wives. The guy managed to catch the doll before it hit the floor. It was very exciting for Luo Shengxi, but the doll was saved and he relaxed. But after a second he realized. It was his mom's master plan. The boy experienced a sense of inevitability when he saw his mom at the closet. Mom felt that her son was acting very strangely today. The woman twirled the shoe around on her toe. She demanded an explanation as to what such a shoe was doing to her son. No excuse came to Luo's mind this time. Mom saw a piece of fabric sticking out of the closet. She was sure it would answer the question. Panic was written all over Luo's face. He tried to stop her, but his mom's instincts are very accurate. The woman opened the closet. She shouted to her son that now they would see what was wrong. The boy rushed to his mom as fast as he could. He hoped he could stop her in time. The woman was shocked at what she saw in the closet. There was a girl sitting right in front of her. Nikki looked at the woman in surprise. She didn't know what she should do. At the same time, Luo's mom didn't look any better. This was something she definitely didn't expect. 
Inside, the guy was hysterical, but he tried to control himself. He called his mom. The woman exhaled sadly and restrainedly. With one hand, she took her son by the shoulder, and she used her other hand to wipe away her tears. She told her son that he should confess. The woman said she would definitely visit him. Luo Sheng Shu realized that there was a misunderstanding. He tried to speak up about it, but mom wouldn't let him speak. She had clearly already drawn some conclusions of her own. The woman was saying why it couldn't be anything other than a kidnapping. She kept crying, and she wouldn't listen to her son. Then her mood changed. She said with conviction that a man should admit his mistakes. The boy no longer tried to change his mother's mind. The woman suddenly felt a light touch on her elbow. It was Nikki. She tried to say that no one had kidnapped her. Like always, she called the guy the boss. Mom was embarrassed. Her son and this girl are role-playing, she decided. The woman said the asylum was the only way to save her son. She stumped the others. An unpleasant association appeared in Luo's mind. If the doctors found out about the ability, what would happen to the boy next was frightening. Luo Shengsha fell to his knees, grabbed his mom's leg and shouted that she was his girlfriend. The girls didn't expect to hear such a thing. Mom looked at him carefully. The woman asked if it was true. The guy told me that they had recently started dating, and he was still on his knees. His mom couldn't understand why the girl was hiding in the closet then. Luo explained that he didn't want to tell his mom about it ahead of time. The woman felt relief fill her completely. She turned to Nikki, and with a friendly look asked if the girl was her son. Luo was taken aback by such a question. Nikki said the gentleman was polite to her. Finally, the guy was able to relax. The girls were having a nice conversation. Nikki was invited for sweets. Mom went out into the hallway and started to leave. The boy went out to see her off. Before leaving, the woman reminded me about the neighbor, asked her not to take too long. She also noticed that her son had changed a lot since the last time they saw each other. Luo felt pleasantly embarrassed when he heard this from his mother. Mom threw something to her son, and she said it was for him. She asked him not to be irresponsible and disappeared out the door. With interest, Luo began to look at the object he was holding. It was a small box and it had a picture of a banana on it. This embarrassed Luo Sheng Shu hadn't felt this embarrassed in a very long time. How does he understand it? The boy wished he could ask his mom, but she was pleased with herself. Nikki's face was red and she asked the guy to be gentle with her. The guy tossed the box on the pillow as he walked back into the room. Luo Sheng Shu was angry at his mom for her prank. Nikki looked at the new object with interest. The boy was attracted by a sound. Behind him, a girl was studying a box. She was tapping on it. Afterward, the girl started biting the box. Luo became very embarrassed. He took the box from the girl and yelled at her not to eat it. Nikki was surprised why you can't. After all, the box looks like chocolate. The guy got embarrassed. He explained to the girl that it wasn't chocolate, but he didn't say what it was. There was an awkward silence between them, and they just stood there. The silence was broken by the rather loud rumbling of the guy's stomach. Luo remembered that he hadn't eaten anything yesterday. There were cold noodles from yesterday on the table as proof of his empty stomach. The guy opened the box that contained the noodles. He saw that it had gotten ugly. Luo decided to get himself another batch and brew a fresh one. But suddenly another belly rumbling was heard in the room. The source of the sound was Nikki, or rather her stomach. The guy asked the girl if she was hungry. Nikki didn't know what it was like to be hungry, but she felt an emptiness in her stomach. The girl was hungry, Luo realized. He asked her what she wanted to eat. Guy remembered that Nikki is actually a telephone, whether regular food would help her. On the other hand, the girl was human now. Maybe she had human needs. Luo asked Nikki to open her mouth. She was a little surprised at this request, but she did as the guy asked. She wanted to know if she was doing the right thing. So Luo leaned over to check and looked into her mouth. Nikki stood with her mouth wide open right in front of the guy. The sight made him embarrassed, and the boy blushed profusely. Shaking his head, the guy tried to concentrate and ignore the implication. Doubts about whether Nikki could be considered human came back to the guy's mind. On the table in front of them was a mountain of various goodies. Luo proudly allowed Nikki to choose anything and not be shy. A pack of cancer-flavored chips got their recommendation from a guy. The spicy chips were also singled out by the guy from the general pile. Nikki started busily rummaging through the bag of food, until something in the bag caught her eye. She took the package showed her and asked if she could eat it. Luo didn't expect her to make that particular choice at all. Nikki continued to hold the pack in front of her and waited for an answer. After considering the girl's choice, the guy let her eat it. Nikki bit the corner of the package, trying to eat it. She couldn't get a bite out of the package, and she told Luo about it. The guy told her the packet was inedible and took the packet from the girl. He showed her to open it first. Then he poured the contents of the packet into the girl's outstretched hands. Nikki looked at the food in her hands with a delighted look. She took one piece and began to examine it. Luo offered her a taste, and Nikki put the treat in her mouth with interest. While the girl chewed, the guy asked her opinion. Nikki replied to him that she really enjoyed the treat. Luo handed the packet back to her. Nikki could eat as much as she wanted, 
Watching the girl, the guy saw her as a normal kid. He took the jello, and he thought the girl should like it. A violet light and a seal amongst it filled the room. Luo covered his eyes with his hand and didn't realize what was happening. When the light finally went out, he could see what had happened in the room. The packaging from the snacks the girl was eating was lying on the floor. A cell phone was lying next to it. The guy immediately rushed to the phone and started calling her name. The phone lay quietly on the table. Luo Shengshu was curious about what had happened. Why had everything gone backwards? While the guy was thinking about his theory on the limitations of force time, he remembered trying to bring the doll to life. It hadn't worked then. This power must have some demands, Luo concluded. He looked carefully at his right hand, which was resting on the table. Luo turned the phone to Nikki precisely with his right hand. There was a notebook on the table that caught the guy's attention. In it, Luo wrote a small list of the supposed features of his power. He'll remember the rules and write down new ones here. Luo closed the notebook, remembering the events of the day and relying on the rule written down. The boy wondered when the power would be renewed. He looked at what time it was on his phone. It was already 10 o'clock. Luo decided to test the power when he woke up. He lay on his bed in the dark with his eyes closed. The boy was spinning around in bed. He couldn't find a place to sit. Luo couldn't fall asleep no matter how hard he tried. He lay there staring at the ceiling. The boy sat up on the bed. He tried to figure out why he couldn't sleep. Luo decided he wasn't tired for the day. The guy started thinking about how he could solve the problem after all. His attention was caught by a stack of napkins that stood not far from him. Luo thought why not use them. It would help him fall asleep quickly later. My hand was just about to reach for the box containing the tissues. When on Luo suddenly realized something very important and awkward. The phone was in the same bed with him. And most recently, it was Nikki. That realization killed any desire he had in him. He found one of his stuffed toys and took it to him. The princess had to help sleep come faster. It really helped. Luo Shengshu fell asleep. He slept with his mouth open. The boy wanted to pull the blanket tighter. The purple light and seal that appeared in the room woke him up. Luo quickly jumped up from the bed. He tried to figure out what was going on. There was a girl lying in his bed. She complained that Luo had woken her up. She had rather large breasts. Also bare belly because she was wearing a top. Her hair was loose and fell to her shoulders. And there was a bang on the top of her head. Luo couldn't understand what had turned into a human this time. But he saw the girl wearing a cloak. It looked just like his blanket. The boy recoiled back from the girl fearfully. Luo began to quickly look for his phone to see the time. It was midnight on the clock, which meant the boy's hunch was confirmed. The cute girl smiled and called the guy to sleep together. Luo was embarrassed by the offer. He was going to refuse, but the girl didn't take no for an answer. She threw her arms around the boy. It wasn't a problem for her. After all, Luo hugs her every night. Luo, in this tight embrace, didn't have enough air to breathe at all. Gathering his strength, the boy jumped out of the girl's embrace. Luo finally had the opportunity to breathe freely, and he took it. The girl yawned. She looked fragile. But the strength with which she held Luo against her, it made you wonder. While the guy was in his thoughts, the girl decided to go to bed first. She fell asleep very quickly without him, and the guy tried to come to his senses. The girl slept very sweetly and soundly. But Luo was not sleepy at this moment. He was absorbed in his thoughts. The guy's hunch about the power recharge time was confirmed. I mean, he wanted Nikki back, but it turned out he couldn't use his power. Luo was very upset about it. He cried with the phone in his hands. His loud crying woke up the blanket. The girl asked why her master was crying in the middle of the night. Luo was still very upset. Nikki would remain a phone and the bed was occupied by a girl. The guy stammered when the girl got a little too close to him. Hugging Luo again, the girl tried to convince him to go to bed. This position embarrassed the guy. The girl was too close to him. He pushed the insistent girl away from him and offered to let her sleep separately. The girl was very upset. After all, they had always slept together. She asked if he didn't like her anymore. Luo tried to explain to the girl in detail what was wrong. But I never understood why they couldn't sleep together now. The sight of the girl started to make the guy dizzy. He asked her to be quiet. But the girl, out of all the guy's speech, heard only a symptom. She jumped on the bed and began to invite me back to sleep. Luo couldn't resist any longer. He didn't sleep. He was just lying next to the girl. As they lay there, the boy realized that the blanket didn't have a name. So the girl suggested that Luo should name her himself. The guy thought for a while he tried to find something worthwhile. When a suitable name was found, the boy jumped up. He called her Beiji. Beja liked the name her master had given her. Luo noticed that they were still very close to each other. The girl confessed that she loves his scent. And he never hits her. Luo was surprised at that last statement. Beji tells her auntie comes in. She hits the girl hard. The guy realized it was about kicking up dust. Good thing he didn't do that. Beji took one of the boy's hands. She put it to her chest. Luo burned with embarrassment and the girl asked him never to hit her. The guy's nose was bleeding. But he promised not to be her. The girl was very happy about this fact and said that the gentleman was the best. Luo looked at his right hand as he lay back in bed again. 
He lay in bed and thought about his power. Maybe he would like a more practical ability. The guy was about to try going to bed again. After all, the girl who lay beside him had long been sound asleep. Just as suddenly she rolled over to his side, and Beiji hugged him tightly, pressing herself very close to the guy again with her whole body. Luo didn't know how he was going to try to sleep in this position now. The girl sniffed loudly in his ear. Luo still had no way to sleep and was very tense. A purple light and seal appeared and illuminated the entire room. And Beiji's pitch of it becomes just a blanket again, just like before. The guy jumps up on the bed and sees this. Luo sadly notes that the effect of the ability is very short. Suddenly he doesn't feel so good. And the guy falls on the bed. He's dizzy and has no energy at all. The sun is already shining outside the window. Luo is asleep and lying snuggled up with a blanket on the bed. He is awakened by the sunlight streaming through the window. He realizes that he had fallen asleep after all. And it was already morning. Luo gets out of bed and walks leisurely to the bathroom. He exhales in relief and lowers his gaze. Guy wonders when his ability might activate again. A potted flower standing nearby loses one of its many leaves. Luo washes his hands under the stream of water from the faucet in the sink. Once again his attention is drawn to his own right arm. The right hand activates the power. The guy decided that since the hand didn't change, so the power doesn't affect him. In these thoughts, the boy reached his kitchen. He took the milk from the refrigerator. Luo wondered if the power had an effect on other living things. The boy poured milk into his glass, put a cookie on the table, and prepared to have a proper breakfast in silence. While he was eating, a strange noise began to come from his mouth. This caught his attention because the neighbors hadn't been there in a while. A realization quickly came to Luo's mind. He had completely forgotten about his mother's request. That was bad. She's scary when she's angry. The guy opened the door quite a bit, and he looked out into the hallway. He saw some people there. It was several men in the same uniform. Luo asked them if they were helping with the transportation of things. Their answer was yes, that's exactly what they were doing. The man apologized that they had disturbed the guy, but Luo brushed it off. Vel's noise didn't bother him much. He walked back into his apartment, and I came to the conclusion that there were people moving into the apartment today. A scraping sound that came from no clear place startled the guy. Luo opened the door and started looking around. He tried to figure out where the sounds were coming from. Then he finally guessed to look down, and he saw a white cat in front of him. It was sitting right at his feet. The boy knelt down on his knees. He stroked her and tried to understand where she came from. Someone on the outside was calling for some coffee. Luo raised his head and turned in the direction where the sound of the voice came from. He saw a little girl, presumably his new girl. She was talking to a cat. The girl took the cat in her arms and apologized to the guy. She told him that they had just moved in. Luo recognized the girl as wearing the uniform of the high school he used to attend. He told the girl about it. They heard a loud slamming of the door and turned back around. The girl was very upset. She was late for school and the key was left in the lock. The girl tried to think of a place to leave the cat. Then she started looking at her neighbor. With one look, asking her to leave her with him. Luo didn't understand what she wanted from him. So the girl voiced her request to the guy, hoping he would agree, and applied the pleading look again, this time with the cat. The guy couldn't take the pressure and agreed to keep coffee at his place. The girl quickly handed the cat to her neighbor before he changed his mind. She apologized for the inconvenience and hurriedly ran off to school. Luo waved goodbye to her in return. The guy looked at the white cat he held in his hands. He stroked her for a while. Then he decided she was perfect. The door closed, letting the guy and the cat into the apartment. Luo grinned to himself. He cuddled the cat against him. After all, the guy was a cat person, too. The guy took out a box and pulled out a toy. It was in the shape of a gray kitten. Luo gave it to Coffee Cake to play with. The cat really liked the toy. The guy also pulled some food out of the box and handed her one bowl of food and the other of water on the floor. Coffee was again delighted at this turn of events. She quickly ran to the bowl, which scared the guy a little. The cat immediately started eating her delicious food from a bowl that was on the floor. Luo figured she was very hungry when he saw this picture. After Coffee had eaten, she began to wash her face, and the guy watched her with amusement while she did it. This went on for a while longer, but then the cat stopped abruptly, and the boy realized something was wrong. Coffee started walking in circles around the room and meowing. Then she sat up and started shivering. The boy gradually began to realize it. Does the cat really want to go to the bathroom? The guy was in a panic when he realized this. Coffee meowed in response to the assumption as if confirming it, and Luo tried as quickly as possible to think of something. Kitty exhaled a sigh of relief. Making a quick toilet out of a box was definitely a good idea. The boy walked over to the box. He covered his nose with his hand. The smell was horrible. The coffee cake was so cute and it stinks so bad afterward. When the cleanup was done and the bag was right under the front door, Luo exhaled in relief. He could finally relax a little. Taking care of a pet is exhausting. Already in the room as the boy looked at the cat, he thought that caring for a pet was more complicated than it seemed at first glance. The boy wondered what it would be like to use his power on a cat. 
He wondered if it would work or not. He imagined the image of such a girl who would be converted from a cat. In his fantasy, it looked really good, but he wasn't going to try it tonight. His cell phone was on the table. Luo picked it up and mentally asked Nikki to wait a little longer. The guy decided to set his alarm for 11.59 to be sure to turn exactly Nikki. Night has fallen. Luo sat at his computer. He was playing some kind of game to pass the time. It was almost 12 o'clock, and Mistress Coffee still hadn't returned. The boy turned to the cat. I wish her owner would come back instead of deciding to give her away for good. The alarm clock rang. It signaled to the boy that it was time to start. The cat was also attracted to the sound. Luo raised his right hand and was ready to use force on the phone. But suddenly Coffee tossed her favorite gray toy into the air. In flight, she crashed into the guy's right arm. He was confused and panicked. This wasn't going according to plan at all. And he'd lost his chance to get Nikki back again. A purple glow and seal appeared around the toy. And then a little girl with ears came to life in the middle of the room. She also had a tail like a cat. The girl thanked the boy for his hospitality. Luo began to scrutinize the turned girl's tail with genuine interest. She noticed his interest, turned her back to him, and started twirling her tail in different directions. The guy started yelling at her to stop. He was all red, and his nose was bleeding again. The girl watched this in surprise and smiled slightly at the guy. Luo took the girl by her flushed cheeks. He pulled her in different directions by them and told her never to do that again. The girl winked at him and said she understood. The boy stroked the girl on the top of her head. She didn't mind at all. He asked her what her name was. The girl told me that her mistress likes to call her Mimi. This incident helped Luo learn something about his power. After transformation, the soul and memories of the object are preserved. The cute little ears on the top of Mimi's head looked soft and very fluffy. They drew the boy's gaze to them. He was curious to touch them. So he dared to ask Mimi for it. Mimi agreed. She really likes to be stroked. She even asked me to do it soon. It sounded a little strange to Luo, and he didn't know how to feel about it. He reached out to Mimi's furry ear. He began to stroke the soft fur. The guy really enjoyed touching Mimi's ears. It was like he was stroking a real cat. Mimi liked it a lot too and moved closer to the guy. The girl began wagging her tail rapidly and stepping even closer to Luo. Luo was interested in Mimi's tail and wanted to touch it too. He reached up and put his arm around him. The girl cried out in surprise. The guy took his hands away abruptly, and Mimi fell right on top of the guy. She was shaking all over, and asked me never to touch her tail again. Luo was very embarrassed about his action, so he apologized to Mimi. Suddenly the girl's stomach rumbled very loudly, scaring the guy a little. He looked at her and wondered if he could make her something to eat. The girl immediately agreed and was happy. Luo stroked the top of her head and thought she was quickly back to normal. On the table, the guy put a glass of milk and a plate of cookies. When the guy was done, he sat down at the table and called the girl to sit down too. She sat with her knees on the cushion the guy had prepared for her. They sat side by side. Mimi leaned over the table and started sniffing the food. That surprised the boy. Luo was slightly embarrassed and said she could relax and she didn't have to smell the food. The girl turned to the boy and looked at him carefully. Then she meowed. Mimi leaned over the glass and began to lap the milk with her tongue, just like a cat. The guy didn't understand how they were in such a strange and awkward position. He carried the girl from the pillow into his arms and set her on his lap. When the guy called out to Mimi, she turned at the sound of her name. Luo began to explain that she was a human being now. She had to eat like a human. The guy took the girl's hands in his and showed her how to hold the cookies. Mimi held the cookie in her hands and listened to Luo. The next thing to do was just bite into it. She opened her mouth and brought the cookie to her teeth. But she was in a hurry to try the new food. So when she bit, the fang hit her right on her index finger. The girl's eyes immediately began to fill with tears. She was in a lot of pain. She started crying a lot. And the guy got scared that she didn't like the food. Mimi turned to him. She showed him her index finger and said she was in pain. Luo tried his best to comfort the girl. After all, it was just a scratch. The boy took the girl's hand, blows on her finger, and chased the pain away with a poem. Afterward, he gently kissed the scratch on his finger. The girl blushed and stopped crying altogether. Mimi blushed with embarrassment and let him kiss her finger again herself. The girl had a strange expression on her face and her eyes were still tearful. Luo bounced farther away from her. The guy's face was burning red, and he apologized to Mimi. With a neat little band-aid, they taped Mimi's scratch together. The guy reassured the girl again and said everything would be okay now. Mimi smiled sincerely at him and thanked her little brother for his concern. After dinner, Luo finally fell into bed. He was very tired. The girl was full of strength and energy. She chased the cat all over the room. The boy watched it. He knew cats were nocturnal animals, but he didn't expect this. The cat decided to jump on the table when she reached the end of the room. Luo saw that trouble could happen if these two were not stopped, because the girl kept running after coffee very fast. And right behind the cat was the computer. The guy yelled at them to stop, and the girl listened to him. They looked at the guy with a question in their eyes. He took the cat and the girl by the scruff of the neck 
and lifted them into the air. Luo was very angry. Those two want to destroy his house, and they almost did. A glass of milk was spilled on the table, and crumbs were scattered everywhere. All the books were lying on the floor in complete disarray. The guy got even angrier when he examined the bigger picture. He didn't understand why he used to think they were so cute. Now he thought they were the worst. Mimi looked very tense when she heard the tone in which the guy addressed her. Luo asked her if she had anything to say for herself. The girl made a cute face and meowed, but it didn't work on the boy. Then Mimi wondered in all seriousness. The girl asked not to be angry with coffee. She didn't do it on purpose, and she apologized on behalf of the cat. It was a little puzzling to the guy. It was just the two of them, and Mimi had put the cat in charge. Coffee was playing with something on the table. As she turned around, it became apparent what was acting as the toy. It was one of Luo's dolls. The guy tried to remain calm and asked the cat not to move. The cat looked at him blankly, then smirked wickedly. A second later, the doll was already flying to the floor. There was a loud scream from the boy. The boy screamed and rushed to save one of his precious dolls. When he caught it, the cat jumped right on his face, and he fell to the floor. Luo was lying on the floor. He had an abrasion on his face. The cat was quietly washing itself, but the doll was safe. Mimi heard something, and her ears turned toward the exit. She said cheerfully that the landlady had finally returned. The guy was alarmed that the neighbor was back so late. Footsteps could be heard in the hallway, and a small silhouette could be seen in the darkness. With each new step, the sounds grew louder and louder. The guy wondered why she was back so late. He was going to go check it out. Mimi asked to go with him. She wanted very badly to go too. Luo reminded her that she was human now. Mistress was unlikely to recognize her. Mimi was upset about it, but she agreed to wait in the apartment. The boy went to the door. He imagined what the neighbor would say about the doll coming to life. Through the ajar door, he saw the light and was surprised. The girl fell right on top of the guy. The guy takes the girl firmly by the shoulders and puts her on her feet. He wonders how she's feeling. The girl looks sickly. She rubs one eye and says it's fine. She's just a little tired. Luo is surprised. Wasn't the girl going to school? Then why did she come back so late? The girl keeps rubbing her eyes and replies that she's been at her friend's house all day. The guy says that's no reason to come home so late. The girl only clucked unhappily in response. His neighbor compares him to his dad and the guy gets a little lost. He tells her that she misunderstood him. After all, it's not safe to come home so late. The girl says she understands that and asks for coffee back right now. The cat appears in the doorway as if she heard her mistress calling for her. They are very happy to see each other and say hello to each other. The girl picks up the cat in her arms. She asks him if he's been behaving well. The neighbor thanks the guy for taking care of the coffee and says he'll take it back. The guy tries to stop her, but doesn't know the right thing to say about the toy. The girl is surprised. She expects the guy to say something, but he doesn't say anything. A neighbor asks if the coffee pot broke something. The guy replies that it's fine. The girl breathes out a sigh of relief. There's no money to pay for the broken thing anyway. The guy tells the girl that something happened to the doll. The neighbor says it's fine. If it's broken, you can just throw it away. Coffee has needed a new toy for a long time. The guy's trying to stop the girl, but the neighbor runs home. It's school tomorrow and it's late. She hides behind her door and leaves the guy alone in the hallway. He's a little surprised it's worked out this way. Luo walks back to the apartment. The guy decides when the powers that be stop working. He explains everything to the neighbor, but there was no way he expected to see what awaited him inside. On the floor of his room lay Mimi. When he called out to the girl, she didn't answer. She looked like she was feeling very ill. The guy picked her up in his arms and tried to bring her to her senses. He asked if she was okay. When Mimi opened her eyes, she said it felt like her strength was leaving her. Luo didn't understand how this was possible. The purple glow and seal filled the room again. The boy had to cover his eyes. In the center of the glow lay Mimi in the form of a girl. She turned back into a toy, but she still kept glowing. The boy called out to her. He didn't realize what was going on. Tears came to the toy's eyes, and she thanked him. The boy stared in amazement at what was happening. He couldn't believe it was really happening. And the toy was disintegrating into dust right before his eyes. He was alone in the room, and he felt absolutely shattered. His hands dropped to the floor with a clap. He tried to understand why things had happened the way they did. He felt guilty. The boy's hands were trembling. Luo began to think about why this was the case. When the item he used the power on is no longer needed by the owner, it disappears from this world. The guy remembered the smile he could see on Mimi's face not too long ago, and the tears themselves flowed from his eyes. They continued to flow down his cheeks with renewed vigor, and he had no plans to stop. He cried out in utter despair. It was already light outside the window. The boy was still lying on the floor. His eyes were still tearful. He sat down on the floor and touched his head. He looked around him a bit and thought that yesterday had felt like a dream. To his senses, it seemed that Coffee and Mimi were just a vision, but he was aware that what had happened yesterday was in reality. Luo sat down at his desk and decided to continue writing his list. 
He added two new items to it that he had learned yesterday. After that, he was distracted by his phone. The guy figured he'd definitely get Nikki back this evening. He felt very sad again. It hurt Luo to think of Happy Mimi. So he decided not to dwell on it and set his alarm for tonight. Night has fallen. The guy sat at his computer while he waited for the right time to arrive. And at exactly 12 o'clock, his alarm clock rang. Luo put his right hand toward the phone, about to turn the phone into Nikki. After he touched it, the familiar purple glow appeared. And behind him, after all this time, it was Nikki who showed up. She threw herself into his arms, and she said she missed him so much. Nikki kicked him to the floor, and she confessed that she thought her master had forgotten her. The guy got a little nervous, but smiled at the girl, and said he couldn't forget about her. Nikki was still sitting on him, and the guy asked her to get off. The girl was surprised at such a request. Isn't the master uncomfortable with her sitting on him like that? Luo yelled for her to get up faster. His bladder couldn't take it. He headed for the bathroom and was able to remedy the situation. Nikki gently looked over to him and asked if she needed any help. The guy was embarrassed by her sudden appearance. He shouted to her that he would be right there. He asked her to wait outside for another two minutes. The door opened. The guy came out of the bathroom. He was still surprised at Nikki's impudence and just walking in on him in the bathroom. The girl was waiting for him just outside the door with her hands pressed to her chest. She asked him not to be too sad about what had happened to Mimi. Luo couldn't understand how she knew that, so he asked her about it. Nika revealed that she's still in the form of a phone for now. She still understands and is aware of what is going on around her. The guy stroked Nikki's head and said he'd never leave her. Nikki was very happy to hear that from her master. She smiled happily at him. Luo told her that calling him master was strange. After all, it would raise a lot of questions from the outside. The girl didn't immediately understand what that meant. A guy asked Nikki to go out with him for the day. But the girl didn't know what a date was. So she asked the guy. The guy cleared his throat and began to explain to the girl in detail what dating was all about. And Nikki listened to him passionately, never taking her eyes off him. After the explanation, Nikki immediately agreed to go on a date with her host. Luo asked again not to be called master, and offered to call himself brother. The girl listened to him and called him brother. The guy really liked it when she called him that. There were many different brightly colored kiosks on each side of the road. There were a lot of people at the fair, and they were everywhere. Luo bought a balloon for Nikki from one of the vendors. They enjoyed the walk as they walked side by side and ate cotton candy. Both were very happy to be able to spend the day with each other like this. It was the first date of Luo's life, and it was with a nice girl like Nikki. The girl's attention was attracted by a long queue at one of the kiosks. She pointed to the kiosk and asked her brother what it was. He took a closer look. It was a stinky tofu stand. When the guy saw where the girl was pointing, he felt really bad. Luo decided to turn her attention to something else. The guy took advantage of the fact that there was a small line at the flatbread stand and talked Nikki into going to him. The girl happily agreed and said she would eat whatever her brother ate. It made Luo feel good that she was willing to do anything with him. They approached the stall and placed their small order for two tortillas. The stall chief gladly accepted it and asked them to wait a while. And pretty soon they had their two hot flatbreads. Nikki had never tasted something like this before. She couldn't wait to eat. The girl blew on the flatbread and took a small bite out of her flatbread. She really liked the flatbread and she thanked the boy for it from the bottom of her heart. Luo felt happy and just smiled back at her. Suddenly, an unfamiliar voice called out to them. They turned at the sound. It was the girl with the jewelry. She was offering to take a closer look at them. The jewelry was neatly laid out and sparkling in the woman's box. Nikki was impressed by this picture. It looked beautiful. The guy was watching her and thought that all girls have a weakness for shiny things. Nikki's face suddenly changed as a certain ring caught her attention. Luo immediately noticed this change in the girl's face. He pointed to a ring that the girl liked and asked how much it was worth. A victorious smile appeared on the saleswoman's face. The woman complimented their taste, told me this ring was on sale today, and offered to try it on. The guy didn't really believe the words of this suspicious woman, but what got him was that the saleswoman called Nikki his girlfriend. Nikki put the ring on her ring finger. She showed it to Luo so he could appreciate it. The saleswoman said that only married couples wear rings on that finger. The guy experienced a strange feeling when he heard this. He immediately pictured Nikki in her wedding dress as she waited for him at the altar. And that image prompted him to buy a ring right away. The woman took the money for the ring, closed her jewelry case, and she left them very quickly. She disappeared in an unknown direction. Suddenly there was chaos all around. Everyone was in a hurry to get away and was shouting. The couple was left standing alone on the deserted street and had absolutely no idea what was going on. And Nikki suddenly noticed that the saleswoman hadn't given them their change back that way. Luo complained that everything just happened too fast. The guy leaned against the wall and tried to catch his breath. A couple standing in an alley somewhere, trying to recover from the chase. They never found the salesgirl. Luo felt a little upset about it. The boy opened his eyes wide and started looking around. 
He looked at the hotel signs that hung on the buildings around them, and a sudden realization came to him of where they were now. Luo was confused and was starting to panic. They stood in the middle of this alleyway in silence. The guy was still in shock, and the girl's surprise just stood quietly by his side. Nikki asked what this place was, and looked at the guy carefully. The guy took the girl by her sweater, and started to lead her away from there. He explained that it wasn't the best place to play. Nikki saw Luo's mom in the crowd, and told the guy. He turned around to see where Nikki was pointing him, and he saw two silhouettes he knew. They were his parents. The boy panicked. He didn't want his parents to know about his outing with the girl. He hurriedly dragged Nikki off the main road and into the nearest alley. They hid against the wall of some unknown house. A tree covered them from the other side. Luo exhaled a sigh of relief. They were still hiding, but the boy couldn't understand what his parents were doing here. The boy realized that if they went out now, they might run into them. It would be better to wait in the shelter. But something across the street did catch his eye. It was the front desk of one of the hotels. He walked up to the counter. The guy pulled the employee off his phone and asked him for a room for two. The man looked up at him and was greatly surprised to see a couple of rather young men in front of him. The employee thought they didn't look perverted at first glance and told the guys that they only had the biggest number left. Luo hesitated a bit but agreed anyway. Take even him. The guy held out his passport to the hotel employee. The employee gave them everything they needed to get into the room and wished them a good vacation. The boy thanked him in return, but he sensed that there was a catch. They called the elevator and rode in silence to their floor. Nikki glanced at the guy. Nikki asked where they had come to and why. She wondered what this place was all about. She couldn't understand why they didn't just say hello to his mom. Luo didn't know what to say to her, so he put his hand on her shoulder. The guy smiled awkwardly and said his mom was on a date too and it wasn't worth distracting her. He suggested we get some rest first. Nikki figured it out. They walked together to the door of their suite and opened it with a key. The door opened inward and a beautiful large bedroom in pink colors appeared in front of the couple. Nikki really liked the way she looked. Luo, on the other hand, hadn't expected it. The girl entered the room first. She turned to the guy and beckoned the guy to follow her. He smiled at her and hurried to follow her. Nikki immediately grabbed one of the heart-shaped pillows that was on the bed. She lay with her in her arms and laughed loudly. Luo was confused and didn't know where to place himself. He sat on the edge of the bed. The boy felt uncomfortable. He was sure that the employee had misunderstood them. Nikki noticed that something was wrong with the guy, so she asked him how he was feeling. After this question, Luo abruptly stood up from his seat, much to the girl's surprise. The guy said the room was stuffy, and they'd better turn on the air conditioning. The air conditioning is working, and the guy stood right underneath him to cool off a bit. The girl suggested the guy take a shower since he was all sweaty. He didn't immediately realize where Nikki had found the shower, so he asked her what she meant. But the woman turned and pointed to the shower that was right in the room. Luo was shocked and he was confused, because the shower doors were completely transparent. The shower stood in the middle of the room and its doors were transparent and sparkling. The boy looked at him in panic and tried to think of a decent reason not to go there. Finally, he gathered his thoughts. He cleared his voice and prepared to speak. Luo lied to the girl that the shower set in this hotel wasn't very good. He said it was better to wash at home. Nikki thought this reason was strange. After all, the guy didn't usually care about such things. She knew he wasn't picky. The guy stared back at the girl confusedly. He hadn't thought about it at all. And then he remembered that Nikki was his phone and she knows his every move. He suddenly realized she had always been with him both in the bathroom and in the shower. And when he cried during sad moments in movies, he watched on the computer. Suddenly, the realization came to Luo's mind that she knew all his secrets. The guy was really embarrassed. But Nikki promised she wouldn't tell anyone anything. He smiled awkwardly back at her and told the girl that she was the best. She seemed to read his mind. The boy breathed out in relief as he lay back on the bed. He let himself relax. He was lying with his arms spread apart. Nikki had a pillow in her hands and sat next to him. She looked distracted and sad. She pressed the pillow to her face and wanted to say something. The girl said she had something she really needed to tell him. She looked sadly straight at him. The boy lay on the bed with his eyes closed. He wondered what she wanted to say. The girl blushed harder, pressed the pillow even closer to her, and began her confession. She said quietly that she only wanted to spend time with her brother. This confession was hard for her. Luo opened his eyes. He didn't expect to hear such a statement and repeated the words after the girl. The guy carefully sat up on the bed and looked directly at Nikki. She was still sitting on the bed the same way, and then added that she really likes the way they're sitting right now. Luo couldn't believe it, but Nikki kept explaining that this way she wouldn't have to share him with other girls. The girl put her hand to her face. She looked at the bed and started to ask the guy uncertainly. Nikki looked right at him. Still, she asked if he could kiss her. The boy flinched at the suddenness of the question. He shouted to repeat the question asked, and the girl still looked sad. Nikki put the pillow aside 
and started to crawl towards the guy. She closed her eyes and put her face up. Luo's face was completely red. He didn't know how he should react to it. Nikki felt something, and she opened her eyes wide. She pulled away from the guy and said their time was up. Luo didn't immediately realize what she was saying. The purple light and seal that appeared in Nikki's place made the guy squint. The girl was surrounded by a purple glow. She looked intently at the boy. Then she confessed her love to him. The glow went out, and the phone fell on the bed instead of the girl. Her sweater and ring remained lying next to it. The boy picked up his cell phone. He looked at it and tried to realize what had just happened. Luo was trying to figure out what he should do now, whether he should confess in return. The guy went downstairs and walked up to the counter, and gave the hotel clerk back the key card. The man looked at the boy in surprise. He was trying to figure out where his companion was. Still, he dared to ask the boy directly. Then he looked him over carefully. Luo was a little confused at first. He tried to think of what to say to that question. He decided to try telling the truth, and see what would happen. But the employee looked at him like he was crazy. The guy laughed awkwardly, and said the girl left a little before he did. The employee said it couldn't be. I mean, he was on duty the whole time, and he didn't see her. Luo looked at the employee. He asked him how many games he had played in that time. He looked away and laughed awkwardly. The guy was just leaving the hotel. The employee told him to come back again. The guy left the hotel disgruntled. He promised himself he wouldn't go to such places again. It was already light outside the window of the guy's apartment. He continued to fill out and add items to his list of features of his power. The guy was sitting at his desk and his right arm was completely wrapped in bandages. In the time since, the guy has tried to transform tap water, a flower, and even fire with his power. That was why his right arm had to be in bandages right now. Through this incident, the guy also noticed that the bandages were blocking his power. The guy was sitting at his computer on the internet and surfing different sites, looking at different posts, until one of them caught his particular attention. In it was written a request for help. The girl had accidentally sold her ring to another person and was trying to find it. Luo saw a picture on the website of the very ring the girl was trying to find. The boy couldn't believe his eyes. The ring was identical to the one he'd bought Nikki at the fair. Memories of yesterday and the jewelry saleswoman who had scammed them came to mind. The boy stared intently at the computer screen. He couldn't understand why she had mentioned only him in her message. He pondered if that could mean she didn't remember anything about Nikki. Same stalls as last time. There are still a lot of people walking around. This time the boy was alone at the fair. He looked around trying to find a saleswoman. And then finally after all this time she caught his eye. She stood in the middle of the fairground selling jewelry from her jewelry box just like last time. She looked at the guy right in front of her in surprise, still holding the box in her hands. Luo said hello to her and asked if she remembered him. He told her that he was the one who bought that ring from her. The girl stared at him in silence for a while and then screamed loudly. She actively started asking the guy to give her back that ring, and he told her that's why he was here. She held out her hand to him and the guy extended his own along with the ring and gave it to the girl. The sales girl said she was sorry and thanked the guy for returning it. The girl apologized that the guy had to travel so far and she noticed he was handsome. And he had morals too. The guy was a little embarrassed because he'd actually bought a ring. The guy asked, since he had returned the ring could he ask some questions? The girl happily and easily agreed to answer his questions. The question the guy asked really surprised the girl, because he asked if he was alone yesterday. She concentrated on remembering and said she remembered him exactly and the ring he bought alone. The guy was very surprised by this answer, and he asked if she remembered the girl he was with. The girl thought about the question again, but she definitely didn't remember anyone. Luo was very surprised by that. He couldn't understand how this was possible. Why this girl didn't remember Nikki? He went back to that hotel where he and Nikki had come to yesterday after the fair. Out of breath, he approached the man behind the counter. It was the same man as yesterday. Luo wanted to ask the surprised employee if he remembered who the guy came with yesterday. But he saw the security camera in the top corner. And he had a brilliant idea. The guy decided to lie that he was at the hotel yesterday and wasn't sure if he'd picked up the bag. He asked to see the security footage. The hotel employee was not very happy about this fact, but he agreed to see the camera footage. On the tape they found the moment the guy came in. The worker asked him if it was him. They looked closer and realized it was definitely him, but he didn't have a bag. There was an awkward silence between the employee and Luo. The man looked at the boy carefully. The man gave an awkward laugh in response to that look. He said he was sorry. The guy said he might have gotten something mixed up and should look for the bag at home. The hotel employee was annoyed and told the guy that he definitely remembered that he was alone. Luo realized that the man's nerves were getting the best of him and needed to leave. So he thanked him and hurried away. It was getting dark outside again. The boy walked into the bathroom and freed his hand from the bandages. The used bandages were left on the edge of the sink. He was taking a shower, 
Standing under the jets of water, he thought about how the end of his power's effect on an object, on people's memory of it, was reflected. Could it be that the only person who remembers what's going on is Luo? The guy finished showering and tried to find his underwear on the nightstand near the shower stall. Finally, he touched them, but he did so with his right hand without bandages. So a purple glow filled the entire bathroom. It grew stronger and stronger and a seal appeared behind it. After that, his underpants took the shape of a girl and she appeared in the bathroom. In a panic, the guy tried to figure out how it had happened. Then he realized he had forgotten about the bandages. The girl put her hands to her cheeks and was very surprised that she could speak. She looked directly at the head of the guy who was standing by the shower stall. The boy looked down and realized he was naked. He cried out in panic and embarrassment. Luo covered himself with his hands and loudly asked the girl not to look and to turn away. The girl was mortified by such a picture. She reminded the guy that they had already done many interesting things together. This embarrassed the guy even more. He yelled at her to shut up, and he shoved her out of the bathroom. He slammed the door shut with a loud slam right in her face. The girl asked the owner if he wanted to use her. A negative answer was heard from behind the door. Left to himself, the boy exhaled in relief and finally relaxed. He stood in front of the mirror and looked at himself. He thought his worst nightmare had come true. He felt rather depressed, and he hoped she wouldn't do anything weird to him. Wrapped only in a towel, the boy walked leisurely out of the bathroom. He was surprised because he didn't see anyone at first. There was no one on the cushion in front of the table. The bed was empty too. The boy marveled when he saw where the new converted girl was hiding. She stood on the open balcony and looked out at the night sky and the city. The girl looked very enthusiastic and was enjoying the view from the balcony. Luo went out on the balcony to see her. He asked her what she was thinking about. The large number of lights of the night city could be seen from their angle. The girl didn't take her eyes off the landscape. She asked the boy to tell her what the outside world looked like. This question surprised him greatly, so he asked the girl what she meant. Then she finally turned to Luo and said she meant everything outside. She drew the guy's attention to how beautiful it was around, and that made the guy realize the beauty around him. The girl suddenly looked very sad and started her story. Every day it is either in her closet or inside her pants. The girl shared that it is very annoying. The guy didn't quite get it. I mean, she's underwear where she should be if not in the closet or in her pants. The girl asked to let her out for a break once in a while. But the boy didn't understand what she meant. The girl looked at him with a look full of hope, but the boy was startled by such a set of words. He asked her in confusion what it meant to take a break. He already pictured himself in the middle of a park at night scaring the girls with the sight of his underwear. The thought made him feel horrified, for showing his underpants like this, he would be considered a common pervert. He refused the girl's request, and she began to look very angry and irritated. She took his hand gently and turned to him again. The girl looked at him sadly again. She asked him to take her for a walk like that at least once. The guy looked at her and decided he should agree. The girl was very excited when she heard she was going for a walk. She couldn't believe her happiness. She began to jump for joy, and the guy next to her pondered that one little walk wouldn't hurt. The girl called her host the best and kissed him on the cheek. This made the guy blush and feel embarrassed. But the girl was very happy and didn't pay any attention to it. She grabbed the guy's arm and ordered him not to slow down. She was going to go right now, ignoring the fact that the guy was wearing only a towel. Luo shouted inevitability and asked her to wait a bit, at least let him get dressed. For the first time in her life, a girl was walking down a night alley, or the street at all. She led the boy behind her, holding his hand. She didn't know where they were going. The girl turned to the boy and asked him to walk faster. Wasn't he always in a hurry to get somewhere? The guy was confused and asked the girl if she was sure. Maybe she shouldn't walk so fast. The girl looked sad. She asked the boy if he was so frail that he couldn't keep up with her. Luo looked very offended. The guy thought that these seemed like normal words, however, from her lips, it sounded rather strange and suspicious. The girl continued walking, again pushing her master. The boy had no choice but to really speed up. The only source of light were the streetlights in the park. The whole time the girl was walking, she kept turning her head in different directions, and the guy suddenly realized that the girl didn't have a name. He suggested the name Hyon to her, but the girl was engrossed in looking at the scenery and said that the name was just an empty sound so he could call her whatever he wanted. The guy laughed awkwardly and decided that he would call her Hyung. He also thought she was unique, just like Beiji. The girl was very interested in the vending machine with drinks that stood at the edge of the road. She pointed at it and continued to look at it with interest. She asked the guy what it was. The guy excitedly replied to her that it was a vending machine. The girl shifted her gaze to the guy. She asked him what the vending machine was for. As the girl continued to look at the car with interest, the guy explained to her that she needed it to buy drinks and offered one to the girl. The girl replied that she didn't understand what was good in drinks, so she wasn't interested. But the guy decided to take them each a can of the drink anyway. It was a Coke. 
He came back to the girl with the jars in his hands. He asked her if she really didn't want to try it. The girl looked at the cans doubtfully and asked if there was anything good in the drink. She thought it was just colored water. They found a seat on a bench right under the streetlight. They sat next to each other, and the girl had a can of drink in her hand. She was embarrassed and smiled contentedly, glancing at the guy the whole time. The girl looked at the floor. She pulled herself together and suggested to her host that she stay in the park all night tonight. The guy looked at her and said no. He told her that it was cold lately, and they might get sick. The girl rested her head on the guy's shoulder. She said she was feeling a little drunk and wouldn't be able to go anywhere. The guy blushed and was confused, looking at the girl on his shoulder. She looked at him with a slight squint, but the boy was going to confront her, so he gathered all his strength. He convinced himself that it was too dangerous to stay outside so late. The guy asked the girl not to fake it, because she was drinking Coca-Cola and couldn't be intoxicated. The girl looked annoyed by this fact. Then she sat up and admitted she was joking. Her whole posture shook with sadness, and the guy didn't know what to say to her. He inquired if she really wanted to stay here all night. The girl was immediately enthusiastic and responded with an ardent assent. The guy looked at her unimpressed. Luo furrowed his eyebrows and asked the girl to forget about it. After all, he wouldn't be wandering the streets this late. He ordered her to be an obedient girl to follow him home. The sun was lighting up the houses again. The lights in the park were no longer on. A guy was hugging his underwear in his hands, and someone was calling him Baby. Apparently, Luo kept urging he young in his sleep to go back home. But when he opened his eyes, he saw before him in the light of day those who had addressed him. It was two grandmothers and a guy. The grandmother was asking the guy why he was sleeping here. The guy sat down and felt very awkward, and he didn't know how to explain it. Suddenly, the realization that he was holding his underwear in his hands made him completely uncomfortable. The boy couldn't understand how this could have happened. But Hai Young, who was happy, did. He was getting evening outside. The guy was lying on the floor next to the desk. His cell phone was on the corner of the desk. Books were scattered around him. Luo was lying on the floor with his chest resting on the pillow. One of the books was in his hands, and he was reading it intently. Then he got distracted from the plot and started thinking that his ability was awesome, but he doubted if he needed it. Luo Shengshu sat down on the floor and looked at his hand. He decided that it was too early to get depressed. Maybe he could turn his ability into something more. He doubted he could create a Mecha girl, but it looked good in his fantasy. Despondency took over Luo again. He thought it would take too much time and effort. This ability seemed ridiculous to him. Suddenly he heard a very loud honk from the street. It distracted him from his thoughts. There was a silver car in the parking lot, and there were two people around it. The guy stepped out onto the balcony and tensely watched the situation in the parking lot. Those two people by the car looked very suspicious. Luo decided to go downstairs and check it out. One guy was standing guard and the other was digging in the car door. The guy on the guard was very nervous. He asked me how long the other one would take. The other guy was hooded. He replied that a little patience was needed. The guy in the hoodie said the surveillance system's broken, and the guard is sound asleep. The first guy wasn't really convinced by his partner's words, so he continued to hurry his partner along. Luo watched them from around the corner. When the guy looked at what was happening up close, he became convinced that these were real car thieves. He looked at his phone but realized the police wouldn't get there in time. Suddenly some brilliant idea struck the guy. The hooded guy had already finished breaking down the door, using lockpicks. He opened the door, shouted to his partner that it had worked out. He was still very nervous. With great speed, something an incomprehensible surrounded by purple light flew at them. The hooded guy looked at the flying object and tried to figure out what it was. But it kept getting closer and eventually illuminated with a purple light and the guy's own face. And in the next second, Nikki falls on top of the mugger. The girl continues to sit on the head of one of the robbers while his partner is shocked at what is happening. Quick footsteps are heard from outside. And then there's a scream and a foot flies at the other guy from above. He looks at it in inevitability and shouts, The next morning, Nikki is sitting on the bed and Luo is on the computer. Both are listening to the news about an attempted carjacking. The guy watches the report intently and events shift to the scene of the accident. They show the guy who was standing guard. He's crying and begging the police to believe him. He starts his story with crazy eyes that the phone turned into a girl, and they were confused. The guy looks at his hand and thinks that he never thought before that his power could be used in such a way. Luo feels like a hero. Nikki sits on the bed and wraps her palm around herself. Guy looks at her and thinks he should celebrate her transformation. Nikki tells the guy that it's really hot in the room. The girl's voice catches the guy's attention. A girl is all sweaty. She asks the guy if she can take off her clothes. Luo gets very embarrassed and starts to panic when she hears this question. He tells her she's a girl and can't take her clothes off in front of a guy. Both are silent, but Nikki looks completely unimpressed by the guy's answer. She tries again, but this time she asks to be given clothes to change into. 
This turn of events didn't improve the situation in any way. Luo needs to figure out what to do. An idea occurs to him, and he catches Nikki's attention. He asks her how she feels about going for a swim together. Nikki looks at the guy with surprise and interest and repeats the words Luo said. The water park is flooded with sunlight and it looks beautiful from a bird's eye view. It's full of people all talking to each other and going somewhere. Nikki and Luo hold each other's hands. As they stand amongst all these people, the guy tells her that they are already there. The girl admires her surroundings. She looks at the guy and says she's never swam before and she can't wait to try it. The guy laughs awkwardly. He thinks that if she had swum earlier, she might have broken. Luo raises his nose high and says that his brother will teach the girl how to swim, and she can take it easy. The girl beside him was very happy. Suddenly someone addresses the guy and the couple turns at the sound. They try to figure out if they're being addressed. They see a beautiful girl in a swimsuit who asks them if they would like to purchase a couple swimsuits. The guy looks at her and all he can think about is that the girl has a beautiful figure. He starts to think that he has never seen Nikki in a swimsuit before, and he should take the matter seriously. They go in search of a swimsuit for Nikki. There are various swimsuits hanging around. Also, some of them were presented on mannequins. The woman who approached them said she had a small store and they could look around. The couple looked around admiringly. Nikki says admiringly that the clothes are very nice and that her brother has the same one on his phone. The woman looks at the girl and doesn't quite know what she's talking about. The guy puts his palm over Nikki's mouth and starts to justify himself. He says the swimsuit selection here is pretty good. The women of the town reveal that the range is handled by her personally and Luo whispers to Nikki to never go back to the pictures on his phone again. Swimsuits on hangers are brought up to the guy very close in order for him to get a better look at them. These swimsuits are shown to him by the saleswoman, and she says that if they buy them now, they will get a discount. The guy feels uncomfortable. He smiles embarrassedly and says that such swimsuits are too revealing for Nikki. The woman is surprised by this kind of response from the guy, and she asks him again. But Luo just nods in response. The saleswoman smiles understandingly at him, more covered swimsuits are coming into view, and the woman puts the guy in front of a choice this time among a more closed version of swimwear. The guy doesn't know what to say. After all, these swimsuits don't fit either they look either childish or for adult women. Suddenly notices something behind the women who are contemplating what to offer them. This is a beautiful swimsuit with bows and ruffles and a fairly closed top. The guy points at him and asks if he can look at that swimsuit. The woman smiles happily and tells the guy that he has a diamond eye and this swimsuit is for couples. Luo is pleased with himself. He gives a thumbs up and says he's taking it. The guy comes out of the locker room, looking at herself in those swim shorts and thinking the floral print is a little embarrassing. He also starts to worry about Nikki because she's been gone for a long time. Suddenly, she's turned back into a cell phone. A woman meets him in the sales room and tells him that he looks really good and he should buy those swim trunks. He thinks about what to say to her. As Nikki exits the locker room, she calls out to him. She stands fully clothed in a swimsuit and asks him what she looks like. The guy has all eyes on her and thinks it looks really good on her, so he tells her that she looks very nice, and it really suits her. The girl was very happy to hear such words from the guy. Nikki takes the guy under her elbow, looks at him and suggests we go swimming, and the boy happily agrees. Luo Shengshu hears his name. He and Nikki turn around to see who's calling him. It turns out to be a girl in a yellow bathing suit. She looks at him and says she's not wrong. She points her finger at him and yells that the guy is a heartbreaker. The guy doesn't recognize her and doesn't know what's going on. He asks her in horror what she means and Nikki is very surprised.